most of us, as we uh, we age, we would like to at least keep some semblance of our youthful looks. Uh, I know some people do a better job of it than others, and some people, just because of genetics, manage to pull it off. And on the other hand, a lot of us, we just simply we see the hair go and we see the crow's feet show up, and some of that could be uh, due to some environmental factors, diet, etc., any number of things. But we're going to get a medical opinion today on how you can better care for uh, for your looks. I think your face is primarily the one you're concerned about. Uh, we have Dr. Jonathan Tripp in studio with us for Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine, Bill Colley as well. It's 834, and right now it's 68, and uh, we want to say welcome back. Good morning. That is your area, one of your areas of background when you were, when you first got into medicine, right, was dealing with people's skin. Yeah, I, uh, part of my emphasis in my training was to take additional electives in dermatology. So I've done quite a bit of dermatology, but then that branched into cosmetics, true cosmetics, where uh, for about five years in Arizona, we were doing lasers and uh, chemical peels and what's called micro resurfacing which is kind of an upgrade for what most people know as dermabrasion oh botox and even fillers and we do some of those things in our office now but i've been very careful to keep that essentially under wraps because what i found in my cosmetic practice was is when i wanted to open up family medicine along with the cosmetic practices that uh, the patients even though they're mainly women and had kids and all that they really struggled to see me as anything other than the cosmetic doctor. And so uh, being in a you know relatively smaller town in Twin Falls in the area, I wanted to make sure people knew we were family medicine and, you know, the kind of the country doc feel first, and then maybe introduce a little bit of cosmetic stuff. So I have quite a bit of background in cosmetics and used to speak uh it's fun to say internationally because it included the U.S. and Canada. Yes. Um, but uh, so I used to speak internationally for one of the uh, main laser manufacturers. So uh, if you took me back about five or seven years ago, I really was among uh, the experts in the field. I would say now that I don't know the latest and greatest, but I have all of the basics that uh, things that work, things that don't work, what are tried and true. And that's kind of what we wanted to talk about. We had the uh, topic of you know, erasing time from your face, but a physician's perspective on kind of what works, what doesn't. Um, and so let me start with some of the basics. Uh, people say, well, why does this person look younger than another? How come I don't look as good as so-and-so and we're the same age? Um, and part of it is genetics. Sorry, I can't change that part. And you can blame that on mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, but they blamed it on their mom and dad and grandma and grandpa too. So that's that's one I can't change. A lot of environmental things we can, and the single biggest one is sun exposure. You know, if you take somebody that's a construction worker or farmer or, you know, a lifeguard, you know, somebody that's spent a disproportionate amount of time in the sun, their skin is just more beat up, you know. And so a lot of us, at least in our younger years, think, you know, the, the heavy tan, almost a half-burnt look was a good look. Well, it is when your skin is well-supported by an underlying foundational layer that with time and with sun exposure thins. And so in later years, that aging process takes place quicker, uh, also causing worries about skin cancers and precancers. So we take care of all of those in our office. But moisture, other than blocking the sun and avoiding that, moisture is a big deal. So there's a million moisturizers out there. And, you know, you can go from things that are just moisture barriers, like something like uh, petroleum jelly or Vaseline, that all it does is stop the, the fluid from leaving your skin, and that's okay temporarily, but really you want to do something that adds moisture and nutrients to your skin. And some of the biggest ones to add are things that are, reduce uh, antioxidants, like vitamin C is an excellent one, and it's a tough one to get a good... Uh, delivery system. Uh, there's there's several out there, and they're usually more expensive. But you know, you think of a cream that is with uh, vitamin C in it. That's an awesome uh, nutrient. Uh, vitamin E is also there's uh, there's what's called alpha tocopherol and delta tocopherol, and they depending on which one they are, one is more water soluble than the other. But a vitamin E in in a moisturizer is a great choice. And the simple thing of aloe vera, especially if you have anything that's like a burn or irritation or even a rash, aloe vera is a great choice, especially if you have it straight from the plant. I, I don't get a lot of sun. I admit that. And I had a terrible sunburn after going to a parade one year with my daughter. And, and 
on the trip out of town, I saw a, a, a drugstore. I ran in and grabbed a bottle of aloe vera, sat down in the car, and as soon as I rubbed it into my face, I could feel the cooling, and the next day I had no peeling. Wow. Well, I can't promise it's always that good, but aloe vera sooner than later is a good move. Uh, if you have a sunburn, I'll just throw this in there. Um, washing your face, if it's just your face or a shower, in the case of you know more body exposure, that shower is a cooling effect. And so even though you're out of the sun, the heat that's built up in your skin is continuing to perpetuate the burn. So, um, you know, a shower the same day or even early in the afternoon will will temporize a, a sunburn. So that's the sun is a, is a big exposure. But so in talking about things like wrinkles and fine lines and age spots or discolorations, even skin tears, we're going to try to talk about those topics as we go forward. We've got more with Dr. Jonathan Tripp coming up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, your telephone calls, too, as well, right here on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Bill Colley answering the telephones. We call this segment of the show Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. We have a caller joining us uh, directly out of the break. And just before we get to the caller, I'll mention we have uh, Dr. Jonathan Tripp in studio with us today. Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. And the doctor is talking about skin care. And primarily, most people are concerned about the look of their face as they grow older because that's the first thing you generally see when you're meeting someone. And it's coming up on 844. Right now, it's 69. And caller, you're on the air with Dr. Jonathan Tripp on KLIX. Yeah, I just wanted to say I was one of the patients. But uh, I was wondering what he thought of this verbal loss advertised on What's it called again? Derma wand. Derma wand. Uh, honestly, right now, I think I know what we're talking about, but I don't know. Can you tell me quickly what it's supposed to do? Well, it, uh, you plug it in, and it's supposed to stimulate your, your uh, derma and keep you from having wrinkles on your face. So in other words, like a stimulation of the skin, and I assume probably several layers of it too, right? Yeah, it, it, uh, it'll uh, kind of painful if you use it too much. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so it is a, it's abrasive, correct? No, it, it, uh, it's kind of a laser. Effect, okay. Kind of heats up. Um, most of the things that are available over the counter in a, quote, laser uh, capacity are really low uh, intensity and have a very superficial effect. Uh, I don't think it'll hurt you if it has a heating effect on it. Uh, it tells me that it's mainly working by way of, of a heat. A and heat's okay for the skin up to a certain temperature. In fact, there's an older uh, skin smoothing technology called Thermage that they have a wand, a bigger wand, that uh, is literally moved across anywhere that you want to smooth out cellulite, and it is heating up the uh, body, uh, the subcutaneous, in other words, the part under the skin where the fat layer is, to much higher than your normal fever would ever get to. And so it does heat it up and essentially kind of melt and reform some of the fat layer. But um, honestly, with this one and the handheld and consumer purch purchasable laser uh, restrictions from the FDA, I would think it might be doing some help superficially, really superficially, but uh, for the most part, I, I think it causes swelling, and then your local, your little fine lines would appear to disappear for short periods of time. Uh, that's a great segue into one of the products I wanted to talk about. So sorry I don't have exact information on that, but my prediction is it's mostly working by heating and then followed by a swelling, which uh, draws fluid to the area, so it makes it look better temporarily, and that's not all bad. I have another caller joining us, and caller, uh, you're on the air with Dr. Jonathan Tripp at 847, and what's on your mind today? Uh, doctor, could you please talk about the importance of using rubber gloves when dealing with chemicals? I had two friends that were mechanics that died young uh, because the antifreeze, the different colors, antifreeze, break fluids, stirring fluids, uh, got into their skin and the, into their liver and kidneys. And also, a friend of mine's wife had her hand removed because she was using chemicals uh, for cleaning, uh, cleaning around the house, and uh, she had to have her hand re uh, removed. 
Well, the losing the hand is sounds like it's uh, she had something more than just general exposure to household cleaning chemicals. But there are there's major uh, cancer risks with some chemicals. In fact, uh, uh, older dry cleaning agents really were cancer causing, and they've been uh, from an OSHA point of view not allowed to be used, or at least have to have a lot of uh, personal protection with them. But I, I agree with the caller's comment that if you have anything that potentially could be uh, absorbed by your skin, which is almost any chemical, but anything that would have a long-term threat, uh, wearing some type of protective gear, rubber gloves might be as one of those, is an excellent choice. I have a patient right now who uh, you know, worked in radiators or works in radiator repair and has a lot of exposure to lead and admits that in his younger years, you know, he thought that was no big deal and then... I can't remember why he got his lead levels checked in his body at one point, but found out that he was well over the uh, the recommended limit. And in fact, I'd recommend no lead in your system. <clears throat> but uh, Get the lead out. Don't, yeah, don't, get the yeah. lead out. That's exactly. So he started wearing protective gear and had to do uh, some treatments that actually try to bring that lead back out of your system. So that's not a cosmetic. That's a more life and death. And that's actually, uh, you know, nice for us to have that little... Uh, diversion in our conversation, but what I'm talking about today is things that really don't save your life. They're more about how to look better, how to feel a little better in your skin. And uh, this is the time period in my tr- in my uh, practice that I called myself a foo foo doc because I knew that they were things that you know didn't save your life, didn't make you live longer, but they're fun, they work, and you know, and they're they're things that aren't uh, threatening. So. Let me tell you about some of the things that are easy to get a hold of. Hyaluronic acid is a component of a lot of cosmetics now, and it's uh, relatively recent, maybe 10 years in since it's a uh, real push on the market. But hyaluronic acid originally was discovered in uh, you know, rooster coxcomb and was initially used to try to replace uh, joint fluid in knees and other joints to make arthritis more tolerable, and we still use that today, and several, uh, uh, d- several manufacturers make things like that. But hyaluronic acid is like a miniature or a microscopic sponge. It holds many times its weight in water, and so you can put that topically on the skin, and it will draw water to the surface, plump the skin, make wrinkles look less, than it. but it's the kind of thing you have to use every day, and that's my belief on the, uh, the derma wand that the caller was asking about is it, it's a way of drawing fluid to the area and making it look good, but you have to continually use it for it to work. So hyaluronic acid is great. It's not harmful. You can apply it topically. Uh, and so I would look for that in products to moisturize and make uh, the skin look better. But let me go to the things that are a little more threatening. The standard for making wrinkles go away for years has been what's called a CO2 laser. And lasers look for a color and in the case of the CO2 laser, its main target is water. So you, when you think of that, all of your skin is primarily water. And so they have to control the depth of it. But essentially, if you break the skin into two main layers, the epidermis and the dermis, the CO2 laser evaporates or vaporizes that upper layer and down into the dermis a little. If you go a little too far, you leave scars. If you go just right, you've essentially eva- you know, vaporized all of the superficial skin, and it's about a three-month recovery with oozing skin, and you have to hide from the public. And if it's in the right hands, it's done beautifully, and you would really do look younger without uh, having to go through a true facelift. A facelift will last, it will give you maybe 10 years knocked off your, your look. Um, and costs, depending on where you go, between about fifteen and thirty thousand dollars to do. Uh, treatments that I've always done have have not been that aggressive. In fact, I kind of pride what we do on the "nobody else knows you're doing it." You know, a motto. Uh, if you, if others know that you're doing it, it's because you told them, or they've just noticed that something looks better. Um, whether that's Botox or whether that's the chemical peels we do, nobody knows. You know, and that's kind of the fun of uh, what I call just cleanup. So things that I would recommend to people is to consider a daily product that has something like glycolic acid in it. Glycolic acid is one of the anti-aging or anti-wrinkle creams. And what it does is it works not only at the superficial layer of exfoliating, 
but it irritates the lower layer, that dermis, and causes it to thicken. It's what we have with our aging or our skin exposure or smoking exposure. That dermis thins. And so, you know, your skin gets more crepey. In fact, I use my hand and, you know, bend my hand back so my wrist has a little bit of wrinkles to it. And I show that compared to, you know, the 16-year-old. And I say, you know, why does mine look different than yours? And it has to do with that dermis layer has thinned. And so that really works well in the face. It works well anywhere in the body. But it's, a, it's an ongoing, constant use. And it takes about six weeks for that to really show up. And I found that this is really true when uh, I had a patient who's about 75 start using it on her arms where she was getting skin tears. And after about six weeks of using it, she no longer got skin tears. Would so, you recommend that for men? I know men aren't you know, big on putting cosmetics on, but would you recommend some of these things for men as well? Yeah, I, it's, you know, obviously I'm the guy that's been working in it, but the, uh, the ability to get rid of some of the sun damage superficially is really nice without having to go through a lot of uh, medical treatments there it is the skin does clean up it does look better the general unevenness of color tones evens out better Uh, I can't get into all the details of how pigment goes but a lot of it is is you're getting rid of some of that superficial pigment so the colors look more even and they are people talk about pores being too big and uh, by doing some of that exfoliation through the glycolic acid, they also, the pores look smaller. In fact, let me warn people that anybody that sells you something that says will make your pores smaller is uh, at least fibbing, if not outright lying, because I know I can make them look smaller, but in reality, I haven't changed the base. I've just kind of taken some off the top so it looks smaller. So warnings about if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Do you have time for another call? Sure. We have a caller joining us, 854 on KLIX. Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine, and you're on the air with Dr. Jonathan Tripp. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, I, I'm a man, of course, and, but I, I have bags under my eyes. What can you do for that? That's a great. Are they dark circles or just kind of baggy? Well, they're, they're not real dark, but there is some darkness there. Okay. Um, well, I could talk you into trying makeup, but not too many guys are going to go for that. <laughs> but uh, really, for bags under the eyes... Um, the best that you can do is a combination of it, the easy is getting something with this hyaluronic acid in it, and it will cause some plumping of the skin so that it doesn't have, uh, it has more fullness to it, so it doesn't ha- appear to be as baggy. But that's a daily, all the time treatment. Another option is a filler, which I don't do these under the eyes, but you can actually have injected filler that lasts for about a year. Um, I'm not a big proponent of that because there's a lot of veins and vessels in that area and that can cause some troubles. And the third is a little more aggressive. I talked about the CO2 laser. There are lasers which are called fractionated CO2. And if you think of like aerating your lawn, how it pokes holes in the lawn and then lets the air get in there, these are lasers that do microscopic little holes in the skin and cause it to contract and scar in that area and you will be red for a week or two but not the three months that I talked about with oozing skin so I do not have fractionated lasers and be happy to help anybody get uh, direction to a place that does but that's about the best bags and circles under the eyes are really tough Um, you can plump them you can you can cover them or uh, there's there are Products that aren't necessarily makeup, but actually give a little reflective quality so that uh, the darkness doesn't appear as prominent. But uh, that is one that a lot of the hereditary component is is a tough one to overcome. I see those old photos of Franklin Roosevelt, and it looks like raccoon eyes. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was, of course, once he got into his late 50s, early 60s, he developed that. We've got about a minute and a half to go. Uh, quickly, the contact information at your office. You bet. To our office, you can reach us at a phone number of 933-4400. Obviously, that's 208-933-4400. And I have excellent nurses. If uh, you know, you'd know you like to ask questions um, or get an appointment, we have great staff. The uh, website is tripfamilymedicine.com. And our uh, Facebook page is Trip Family Medicine. So... Any of those, you can contact us and happy to uh, you know, you, see new patients and you do, gotta take have this a little fun up. with the foo-foo. you got to take this topic up again because 
all the phone lines are going. So we it's, may have to get back to this one. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to say the uh, people, well, you know, the first thing you see in the morning when you walk in and turn that light on in the bathroom is yourself in the mirror. Yep. So everybody has an issue. And, and I, most people, very few people will look at their face in the mirror and say, I don't need to change anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually it's a, uh, wait a minute, who's that? Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, at 3.30 in the morning, I say that a lot of times. I want to thank you for coming by today. We'll see you again soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Dr. Jonathan Tripp joining us this morning and uh, from Tripp Family Medicine right here in Twin Falls on Fillmore Street on the uh, north side of the city across from the main post office. 9 o'clock news is coming up next, and then Ruth Pierce, Twin Falls City Councilwoman, will be joining us. We're talking about some budget hearings coming up today. Uh, well, they're not today, but we're talking about them coming up, and also, we're talking about some road repairs. A lot of us getting a little bit impatient with that. She'll give us a rundown on what you can expect.